Preferred Leader tonight at 8.30 here on One. But for now, here's EcoEye. In this episode of EcoEye, we investigate two potential environmental killers you may never have heard of, but could be in your home right now. One is invisible and odourless, in the air we breathe, and the other so small it may be lurking in the water we drink. Today, we're looking at one of Ireland's silent killers, radon. It's a naturally occurring, radioactive, invisible gas that collects in the home. It's easy to test for and simple to eradicate. So, how come it kills 200 people a year in Ireland through lung cancer? Dave and Neve Lawler invited me to Galway, where they'd just discovered their home at some very disturbing levels. Hi Neve, David, thanks for allowing me into your home. You're very welcome. How did you find out about the radon test and getting it done to your house? Uh, there was a student locally doing a PhD study on radon levels in houses in Galway and he included our house in the study. When the student brought back the results to us that our house had very high readings and we have a very young family, we have five young children and I know that it affects young children and older adults. So we were very concerned about it and we had to find some solution to remedy it. When the results came back, Dave was shocked to find out that his young family was exposed to over twice the recommended limit. It's at the level where it's like the equivalent of an X-ray per day. So the family's been exposed to that, you know, for 10 years. That's quite a worry. I mean, you obviously don't know what the effect will be for many years, but um, mm. yeah, it's quite a concern. We've been told as well the ground floor where we live most of our time the, that the radon is quite a heavy gas. And as it turns out, we have very high levels downstairs. So it's, it's quite frightening, really, that you don't realise what um, the fact that it is invasive in your house, so you don't realise it's there. And I know there's a very high effect on young children. It's a frightening um, thing to have in your home when you don't even realise it's there as well. Since you found out about the problem, are you concerned about it? We've always opened windows. Every day I'd open windows upstairs, but never downstairs. But now I'm opening windows downstairs to let air come through, just to try and ventilate the house. I'm, I, I'm much more conscious about it. As in, I said, ventilation is all we can do for the moment until we get a more permanent solution. One person dies every two days from radon-related lung cancer in Ireland. I asked Dr Ross Morgan at Beaumont Hospital to explain why the mortality figures are so high. Doctor, thanks for giving the time to talk to us. Why do we call radon a silent killer? We call radon the silent killer because most people who are exposed to radon aren't aware of it. And if you're exposed to radon for a lifelong, long period of time, uh, it is a known carcinogen um, and can give rise to lung cancer in a certain amount of patients. If we were to look here, we can see here in the centre, this is the windpipe of the lung, OK? And the lungs are exposed on the right and left. And these are the branches of the airway. So as we breathe, we filter about six or seven litres a minute of air into the lungs. So anything that's contained in that air, so whether it be smoke or whether it be radon gas, is carried through the lungs and can affect the lining of the inside of the lungs there, if you like, the skin on the inside of the lung. And what happens with radon gas is that these small little radioactive particles are released on contact with the, with the surface of the lung and can cause changes in the cells that may give rise to cancer. Will you see it on an X-ray? Well, you won't see exposure to radon gas on an X-ray. We can detect lung cancer on X-rays, and we can see things. This, this would be an X-ray of somebody that I would see with a, neck, with a lung cancer, and that lung looks pretty normal. But on this side, on this lung, the first thing you notice is the lung looks a bit smaller. It's been pulled up a little bit. And in this area here is unfortunately what looks like a lung tumour or lung cancer. When it gets to this point, patients have a lot of symptoms. So breathlessness, cough, coughing that won't go away, sometimes coughing up of blood, and patients start losing weight. And unfortunately, one of the problems we have, uh, Duncan, with lung cancer is it presents late. So people aren't aware of it until they start getting symptoms. And by the time they have symptoms, it's often too late to be cured. What we really have to do is look at ways to prevent lung cancer. Smoking would be by far and away the biggest cause of lung cancer, but that's preventable. Uh, but radon it would be that, 
probably the next, uh, in terms of known cause of lung cancer, be the next most important. And the important thing then is that people who are exposed to radon in the home over their life, those who smoke have a much, much higher incidence of lung cancer than those who don't smoke. Doctor, am I right in thinking that smoking multiplies the effect of radon in the home? Yes, you're quite right. And it multiplies it by probably a factor of 25 in terms of uh, equivalent doses of smoking and doses of exposure to radon gas. What happens with the exposures to both smoke and then to radon and then the synergistic effect that you mentioned that occurs together with them is that more than one hit is occurring as a consequence of this multiplier effect that you described. And so long-term exposure to both of those carcinogens uh, is, 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 is worse than having the exposure to radon on its own. Dr. Morgan's statement about lung cancer presenting late really made me think. If we're to do anything to cut rate on deaths in Ireland, some kind of early warning system is crucial. I went to the Dublin laboratories of the Radiological Protection Institute to meet Dr. Anne McGarry and her team of scientists. Here they monitor our exposure and estimate that 250,000 people are living in homes with cancer-causing levels in Ireland. The way radon is measured is with two little detectors like this. We recommend that people put one in a bedroom, one in a living area, because that's where you spend most of your time. So these are, are tightly closed together. When you open them up like this, there's a little plastic inside, just a, a tiny little plastic like this. When the air gets into the detector, the alpha particles impinge on this plastic and make tiny little tracks on it. Now you can't see them with the naked eye because they're tiny, but we bring this back to the lab, take it out, etch it in a chemical, and then we place the plastic under the microscope, and this is what we see. What you're looking at is tiny little tracks caused by the alpha particles on this plastic. So here we count all the little tracks on the plastic and from that we can work out what the radon concentration in that house was. And is Ireland particularly bad? We have many areas in Ireland where there are high radon levels. Compared, for example, to the UK, where the average level is 20 becquerels, in Ireland it's almost 90 becquerels per metre cubed, so it's considerably higher. So what's the safe limit? There's no safe limit per se. What we say is that if you're exposed to a level higher than 200 becquerels per metre cubed, then you should do something about it. So really what we're saying is that above that level, the risk is getting too high to tolerate and we recommend you do something about it. So Anne, what are you doing now to protect people in Ireland? Well, the first thing we did was we measured radon throughout the country. So we found out where are their high levels of radon. Now we're trying to encourage everyone to have their house tested for radon because they may have a high level. And if they have a high level, then our job is to encourage them to do something about that, to remedy the house, to bring the radon le level down and to reduce their risk of getting lung cancer. High radon areas identified in Ireland can be associated with igneous rock geology. However, it's important to point out that houses with high radon levels have been found in every county in Ireland. Today's homes tend to be poorly ventilated during winter months, making them trap more gas. Radon protection is required under the building regs, but recently constructed houses often don't effectively control radon levels because of poor construction standards. Back in Galway, the Lawlers had called in a specialist radon contractor to deal with their problems. Hi Eugene. Hi Duncan. Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. Grant, have you done all your surveys? So uh, we had, we've had a look at the house, yes. Yeah. What's the solution now to David and Neve's problem here? The good news is that radon problems generally are very easily fixed. And the solution in this case is what's called an active radon sump. That involves drilling underneath the floors from the outside of the building, and then we attach an extractor fan to that pipe. And that extractor fan basically draws radon from beneath the footprint of the building and exhausts it off to the wind. It's a very simple procedure. It's proven technology. So that's smoke now. It's not radon, but it gives the same effect. You can see the way it's seeping up here. It's under pressure coming in and it's spreading. Eugene, this is amazing. Can you tell us about it? I mean, is this how radon actually will infiltrate up from a subfloor? That's exactly what's happening. This smoke now is tracing the path that radon takes through the floor. If you could see radon, 
this is what you would see. And eventually you will see that smoke finding its way to the, the other parts yeah. of the building. When you're actually putting this fan on, it reverses this problem. It creates a negative pressure in the subfloor. Is that what Exactly, happens? yeah. And if we reverse the fan now, we'll actually see smoke coming out. It'll actually suck the smoke from the floor and you'll see smoke coming out of the fan. Can we see that effect? Let's do that, yeah. yeah. Right, so we see the smoke now being sucked out of the room. Precisely. And that's what typically is happening. Precisely. The radon will be pulled from under the subfloor, and any that gets into the house is being pulled back down and dissipates into the atmosphere. Precisely. If you could see radon, that's exactly what you would see. Neve, what would you say to others in their homes, like yourself, watching the programme tonight? Well, the testing is a very simple process. It's just leaving two small monitors in two rooms in your house for three months. The RPII can supply the monitors and I think it's a very worthwhile thing to do because, as I said, the dangers are so high. I kind of feel guilty that we didn't do this sooner, but now that I know, I know it's a very simple process and it's a very worthwhile process as well. It's clear that the health impacts of exposure to radon gas in the home can be very serious and cause lung cancer. The good news is there are simple remedies that start with a test. My advice is simple. Have no future regrets. Carry out this test now. It will protect your family and put your mind at rest.